Hi there. Um, this time I'm going to be talking about um, piriform piriformis syndrome. Um, mainly what is a piriformis syndrome is, is a compression of the sciatic nerve uh, on where the, by the piriformis muscle being hypertonic or uh, being in a spasm mode or um, perhaps, you know, because um, with, because a lot of people um, misinterpret um, anything painful there will be sciatic nerve, right? Um, it, it doesn't have to be necessary. It could be a piriformis trigger point and it could be a piriformis syndrome, which we're going to be talking about right now, or it could also be a say, sciatic, true sciatic nerve um, lesion, or right? Um, so, but we need to know that, right? Because let's say if a client comes uh, to a therapist and um, the therapist didn't do the proper assessment, we need that proper subjective or objective assessment. And we use the same assessment as the doctors and it's a globally used by, you know, physiotherapists and all that. So we need to use that accordingly. So we're going to have to uh, assess them and rule out and repute which one is which. So having said, if it's a piriformis syndrome, since it's a piriformis syndrome topic here, um, the therapist shouldn't be pressing on that area there because... Um, some therapists would be using elbow. I'm not an elbow person. I'm more more of a thumb person. I like to feel that, and I like the muscle to come to me more so. Um, so, but my thumbs is it's already it. You know, I don't wanna, right? So, um, and I don't have any professional, um, um, how do you call it yet? So I hope, uh, right? But like I said, um, this. Out the elbow um if ever we're gonna use this we're gonna be so um uh, how do you call it careful of where the piriformis sits where the sciatic nerve sits right um because if we're compressing on the uh, piriformis muscles we're also compressing the sciatic sciatic nerve right so um um by using this we're not able to um properly do our discretion on that um so if we're gonna use this we're just gonna have to be careful okay Okay, so I'm just going to go on with my notes here now. Um, um, okay, so, so conditions uh, affecting the sciatic nerve that refer down the posterior thigh are often referred to the general public as sciatica, which as I said, but the term is not as specific because it may refer to the inflammation of the nerve or compression of the nerve in the lumbar spine and the gluteals or at another distal point along the pathway of the nerve. So it may even refer to the um, symptoms common to, um, like I said earlier, the uh, piriformis um, trigger points, right? Uh, but if it's a compression of the nerve uh, causing by the piriformis muscles being hypertonic, then that is piriformis syndrome. I just want to establish that there, okay? So, um, Okay, so the sciatic nerve, we're going to talk about the sciatic nerve a lot, uh, first off, right? Okay, uh, I'm going to do another video of nerves alone, but for sci sciatic nerve, a, a brief um, um, discussion about it or um, presentation will be that um, it supplies a sensory and motor function to the skin and muscles, okay? And usually it's like the, the leg and foot and it's on the posterior side. Uh, like I said before, posterior is at the back and anterior is in the front, okay? So we have to establish that. So it's where here. These are more the sciatic nerve, okay? The posterior, okay? So we've established that. So it is composed of the nerve roots L4 to S2 or S3 um, with sources differing about, um, you know, the latter, right? The sources are referring to the, the S3. Okay, so the, uh, I'll get it again, I'm going to say it again, L4 to S2 or S3. Okay, so the sciatic nerve is comprised of two peripheral nerves. Um, these are the, um, the common peroneal and then the tibial nerves, right? So um, they, they travel um, up to the knee. And then the piriformis muscles inserts on the anterior surface of the sacrum and runs in a horizontal orientation to attach on the medial superior aspect of uh, the greater trochanter of the femur. 
So deep to gluteus maximus, the piriformis and upper three lateral rotators spread out from the greater trochanter like a fan. Okay, so the name piriformis actually refers to its appearance. Pira meaning it's like a pear shape because it's, it's more so like a pear um, um, muscle, right? The pear shaped muscle. So the, bro the broader portion of the muscle emerges from the foramen and then the muscle narrows at the greater trochanter. Okay, um, I'm going to be talking about briefly about the causes of the piriformis syndrome. Um, let's see, um, there's a penetration of the muscle again, there's that nerve compression, right? I, I mentioned that earlier. Um, there's that anomalies that's happening with the nerves, okay? So um, there could be a, a direct uh, or indirect um, trauma up to the piriformis. Let's say, you know, you were in a motorcycle and you fell on your buttocks. Um, that will um, most likely um, cause some compression. It, it will cause some piriformis syndrome. Not that it could also be a sciatic, a real sciatic nerve, right? So the these types of trauma lead to inflammation, ischemia. I did some videos about that. I can't specify each one, but and spasms, okay? So eventually resort, resulting in scar tissue, adhesions, and trigger points. I didn't do trigger points yet. I love that topic. But, tra you know, it, it states that one third to one half of passengers and drivers involved in accidents, especially drivers in a side impact accident, had trigger points and performance. Okay? Um, or even catching one fall from like a, a fall. Or like, a, you know, like you slip. Because if you slip, you're going to end up um, into your lateral. Um, okay, so this is the lateral, and um, I want to specify this too. I want to establish this. Okay, piriformis is um, the main lateral rotators, okay? Lateral rotators, right? So that's what it does. That's the main um, function of the piriformis, and it's doing most of the work because I know it has synergies to go-go cue, you know, those go-go muscles, right? Go back. If you can search for some videos of mine that I did, um, so it's the only muscle. It's always it's harder. It's working hard uh, when it's working. Whereas the um, the hamstring is helping um, with internal rotation, right? So there's more um, on the internal side than as opposed to the external side, right? So having said that, um, performance is always more so hypertonic. So it, it could, that alone is saying that alone, sorry, I don't make a script or anything, it's just how I my mind goes. So having said that, that alone, um, it's always hypertonic, it's always going to cause compression there. So people will uh, automatically, if you go to the doctor, you will probably be diagnosed with um, sciatic nerve, right? But sciatic nerve, like I said, is, it could be inflammation of the nerve, it could be a compression of the nerve. But it could also be a compression of the piriformis or the sciatic nerve by the piriformis muscles, right? Right? Or it could be a trigger point on the piriformis. So we have to um, rule out which one is which and repute. But anyways, going back. So having said, going back to the piriformis syndrome, I'm going to be talking about other um, uh, factors that will be um, thing, right? Inflammation or... Um, you know, can overload the muscle and it causes trigger points or spasms, okay? Um, so for, like I said, uh, inflammation, I mentioned earlier, sorry, uh, or the degenerative uh, changes of the performance muscles. So it's fascia or the adjacent uh, joints. Um, there's, if there's any, um, let's say, the degenerative changes, like, um, let's say in the hip, um, um, there's contractor happening. Why? Because um, let's say a person is always on doing this, right? So, and it's not really moving. And during this pandemic, we're not really doing any of our, our workout, even though walking or running. So, like me, so meaning um, it's more so like it's going to inflame. And there is going to have that changes. Adhesions can happen. Contractions can happen if we're not gonna uh, create some movements in, in in the joint, right? So uh, that will happen. And of course, 
not even mentioning the fascia itself. Like I mentioned, contractor. So once that once that develops, it's gonna create some contractors and then adhesion, adhesion. And then if there's an overuse, um, you know, overuse uh, of the muscle alone. Since we're talking about piriformis syndrome here, overuse of the piriformis. If let's say we're always doing the lateral, you know, we're always overusing the lateral rotators, and and, and I'm not gonna specify on that. We don't know. We do know the um, the action is you know like I said so it's lateral sorry so it's a lateral rotators I don't have anything to hold so it does do this right right so um, it does that so this is internal this is lateral okay okay so if there's any overuse like let's say if a person is going to the gym without proper knowledge of how the muscle works and doing a one squat or doing some squat on one leg and you know not properly doing it you know one could be really um how to say it, it's not going to be in balance and it's, it's going to cause something down the line um because it's the sciatic nerve is in between the piriformis muscles right so it could be um, a cause right um so you know how like those uh, women who likes to do the step machines, right? Yeah, that that too will cause the piriformis uh, muscles to be really hypertonic. Um, so, um, and women, we are tend to be external uh, rotators anyways because we gave birth, and I'm not gonna mention the other part of it too. But we're always in this, right? External rotator rotation. So. Meaning our performers are always working, and I have mentioned that it's the only main. Um, it's a it's a small muscles, but it's uh, it's really really doing a lot of work. Before I lose my train of thought, so postural and positional concerns. Um, this one here. Um, you know, if there's any um, hyperpronations, meaning if there's any internal um, rotations happening and adduction of the thigh during walking. Um, the performance is also overworked as it tries to control this exercise rotation. Okay, Flex flexion contractures or hyperlordosis can cause tension in the muscles as they try to stabilize the pelvis. So the tight stretch muscles in the buttock pushes the nerve against the bone. This condition can occur in the third trimester of pregnancy due to the shift in the center of the gravity and increased inter external rotation of the hip to accommodate expanded abdomen. I forgot to mention that, like. That's the main, you know, um, that's why um, women are more prone to having um, performance syndrome. Why? Because when uh, we get pregnant and give birth and, and um, for nine months, we're going to carry that. So we're going to, our, um, our pelvis, everything else will prepare for that fetus, right? So it will, you know, and more so um, we're going to be in a lateral, we're already in lateral, it's like, lateral right but if we're um as a woman we're gonna have that lateral rotators um more uh, be working okay god thank god i'm reading this book now it's the best book actually uh it's, it's why they uh it's a clinical okay massage therapy it's by fiona rattray and uh, linda ludwig that's an amazing book um that's all i did to pass the mcq Okay, so um, this condition can occur in the third trimester of the pregnancy due to the shift in the center of gravity and an increased external rotation of the hip to accommodate the expanding abdomen. I'm going to say that again. So if the muscle is placed in a shortened position for a long, prolonged period of time, the performance becomes hypertonic and can compress the nerve. I've said that, I think, earlier. Um, examples of shortened position are sitting with the knees. Uh, if you're sitting on the knees, you're abducting um, often with angles together sitting on one foot or driving a car for prolonged periods uh, with a foot on the accelerator, which is me. So me, I have a lateral pelvic sh shift. Um, also that I um, I did have an, an ATFL um, dislocation. Uh, um, I had dislocated my ankle, subtellar, um, and it causes a, a sort of, it affected my ATFL. So now it's causing some, I felt here. And also, because of my driving, right? I, I used to drive four hours away, um, you know, um, living in Ontario. But going back, um, so anything that leads to or aggravates trigger points, which will 
uh, during class sharpening your other muscles. So let's say if you're sitting on a wallet, right? Like a, a track driver sitting on a wallet, that'll cause like a, a pelvic shift, right? So one will be tight, um, tighter, and it's gonna compress also on the nerve, right? So we don't want to do that. Medical treatment includes a cortical storage injections and tissue therapy and massage therapy. So surgery is infrequently used. Uh, only in extreme cases in the sectioning of the tendon near the insertion, insertion of performance perform. Okay. Travel feels that in many cases treatment points are overlooked in the medical treatment of this condition. Okay, so I'm gonna be talking about what the question um, that we're gonna do uh, for any of the uh, person client who will come to us for therapy um, first off we're gonna ask them do they have any systemic condition do they have any uh, cardiac disorder do they have any kidney um, disorder do they have any um, um, hypertension okay any hypothyroidism and all that uh, rheumatoid arthritis any systemic condition okay um, also we're gonna say uh, we're gonna ask them have they been seen a doctor and diagnosed by the doctor of piriformis syndrome okay because you know we're gonna have to figure out what tests were uh, used to determine um, that diagnosis of what they how they did and that ended up with a diagnosis but regardless of what those diagnoses we're gonna do our own um, um, assessment and we're gonna pre uh, we're sent them with our clinical impression okay so has the client um, seen any parallel therapies right um, is there any medic medication um, that's been they've been taking uh, just to have some relief or any injections, right? Um, and it's important that if they have received that injection within the last ten days, because it's important, especially for um, massage therapists to know um, which area um, it's it needs to modify some sort of modification and you know, all that. Okay. Um. So another thing too, um, we need to know when did it. Um, the symptoms occurred and how long have they been experiencing all these um, symptoms if, you know if there's any numbness and tingling um, down the leg um, that's usually um, a common response right for um, performance syndrome if there's numbness and tingling right um, then you you, um, you kind of automatically will think of that so where does a client experience pain or often sensation? What is the quality of the pain and how intense is the pain or sensation? How frequent it is? Those are really very good that we need to know. And if there's any injury that happened, let's say, that could be, you know, contributing to that condition or that pain that, you know, or whatever, they're, the piriformis syndrome. They're referring to piriformis syndrome, but again, we're going to do our own assessment. So we need to know if they had had any injury at all, right? And also if there's any, um, you know, occupational um, involvement, you know, whatever their job is, that's important. Like I said, if a truck driver or um, thing, right? I'm going to mention about the special test that needs to be done. So the face abduction test. Uh, so a face abduction is just resisting the external rotation, right? So you can have your client to sit down. Um, I'm gonna have to do another video of this or just cut this off. So, um, you're gonna have to have your client sit down and you're gonna have to rest, resist um, external rotation, right? If the client cannot do that, then they're positive for the pace abduction test. Okay, so the performance length, length test, um, if you know on the affected side, um, it's shorter, um, then that means they're positive, okay. Sacroiliac joint motion palpation may reveal res res restricted movement on the affected side. Okay, so upon palpation, we're gonna do the motion um, palpation test for the SI joint. If we see some restricted movement, then they're, that means they're positive. So for the differentiating uh, sources of our uh, radiating blood pain, um, there could be a compression of the nerve at the lumbar spine because sometimes there could be a her herniated disc, right? Or you know if that means we're going to have to do some of the testing, spurling testing, kernigs, cam, slump test, straight legs test, or lassure test. I can't even pronounce that, but SLR to be to be really um, um to be on the safe side here. And also the DTR, we're going to do that. Then weakness and difficulty are apart in the performance of re repeated toe walking. 
hill walking. You know, toe walking is S1, right? Hill walking is L5. So R1 sided uh, deep knee bands, L3 to 4. So another different trading sources of for any um, red rating um, buttock pain will be lumbar spinal stenosis. So if there's any, um, this is usually a uh, bingo, but a bilateral. And it, it causes more pain if you're walking, but if you're lying down, it relieves, it, re it relieves you off from it. And another factor is facet joint irritation. So this will be positive with PEMS test usually, okay? Palpation of the uh, performance will not be painful, um, but it will just yield positive for PEMS test. Inflammatory arthritis, such as ankylosing scolitis, and spondylitis, usually bilateral pain, have similar symptoms to both nerve entrapment and trigger points of tetanin mine. Okay? Um, usually, the assessment done usually is by the doctor for um, x-ray or any um, some diagnostic thing uh, that they will do. Okay, contraindications for any therapy, if they say they come for a therapy, uh, let's say for massage therapy, we're not going to massage locally for 10 days after they have that injection, the cortisone uh, injection. So we're going to avoid the compression of the sciatic nerve. Like I said, um, you know, if we're going to use, you know, the, the, um, the elbow, we're going to have to try to use another technique, okay, or perhaps another option to release that piriformis syndrome from being hypertonic. As opposed to using the elbow, we can use probably the palm. Okay, so we're not going to form friction. Um, we all do notice that if they're taking anti-inflammatories, we're not frictioning them. Okay, um, we're doing other ways. We're going to try to um, do some patrissage. We're just going to try to decrease the hypertonicity and we're going to try to warm up. We could perhaps use some hydrotherapy on them. Okay, so joint play along with hip and sacral mobilizations are avoided in the third trimester of pregnancy. Also, I have to uh, stress this that um, uh, for pregnant women, right, they're so hyperflex because why they have to prepare for, for their fetus to develop and grow inside them. So that means they're just going to be, la you know, elastically there and they're so flexible. We're not doing any joint play on them. Okay. So along with that, if there's any joint play, along with the hip and sacral mobilization, we're going to avoid them in the third trimester of the pregnancy. And perform with extreme caution with osteoarthritis also and degenerative condition affecting the hip or sacrum okay even for pregnant women even after six months of postpartum we're not doing any joint play with them they're so hyper flat like with me I try to avoid people doing um, stretching on me or, or um, how do you call it um, joint play because I'm too hyper um, flat already I'm so I could like I can literally put my my legs on my, you know, at my age, I shouldn't be that hyper flat, but I am. So um, I avoid any joint play done on me. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about the symptom picture. So performance syndrome is usually unilateral. Pain is present for a variety of sources, right? It could be a compression of the sciatic nerve. It could be because of the result, results in pain and paresthesia. In the posterior thigh, it's projected to the calf and the sole of the foot. So, excuse me. This is accompanied by numbness in the foot. Um, there are different, differing opposite opinions as to the presence of lumbar, sacral, or gluteal pain with a static nerve compression. I'm always rushing. I'm sorry. So this location of pain may in fact be caused by active performance and gluteal trigger points. I've said before, if the compression is severe, there's maybe a loss of proprioception of the muscle strength in the lower leg, which could lead to an ataxic gait or a, a drop foot. Okay, entrapment of other nerves is possible. Okay, so if you're noticing that your client has a drop foot, um, okay, uh, that has to you have to advise them to see uh, um be seen by a doctor uh, but also we need to uh, see that that is one of the factor okay that's one of the manifestation so potential nerve compression causes perennial and inguinal pain as well as dyspareunia painful intercourse intercourse for women and impotence in men okay so these are some manifestations so compression of the gluteal nerve causes buttock pain with possible gluteal atrophy if sympathetic 
Oh no, it's so dark now my phone. I think it's uh it's dying. Okay, so uh there, these are compressed obviously and if there's an active trigger points, uh it's causing so much pain in the lower back, the buttocks, the hip, the steer tie. Um and we have to check our, you know, uh, trigger point referral pattern. Uh if there's any um nerve entrapment, any active trigger point, um it's usually increased by any prolonged sitting or any any position with prolonged hip flexion, adduction, and medial rotation by arising from a seated position or by standing. Okay, symptoms are generally aggravated um, by activity. Any internal rotation of the uh, hip will exacerbate symptoms, especially if the muscle is split and the nerve passes between its two bellies. Okay. So pain often decre uh, decreases with external rotation of the hip. There is weakness in performing abduction, flexion, and internalization of the affected hip. And SI joint dysfunction is often presented due to shortening and tension in the peripheral muscle. muscle. This type of dysfunction can also be caused at trigger point and nerve entrapment. Um, I think I've mentioned everything. Um, uh, I haven't talked about the function of the performance, but I can do another video with regards to that when I charge my phone.